Mr. Ben, do you, uh, do you in, or does Mr. Corbyn enjoy full, your full confidence in him? Yes, he does. And as Jeremy has just pointed out, under his leadership, we forced the government to U-turn on the tax credit changes, not to cut police numbers any further. And he's achieved that by his patient, quiet, forensic, but really effective questioning of the Prime Minister at the dispatch box. But we do have a difference of view on the matter that will come before the House of Commons tomorrow, which is, for me, the threat to our national security, the safety of our citizens, that of other citizens around the world, given the threat, the real clear and present threat, that ISIL Daesh presents to us and many other people. But this is a, the most fundamental decision any politician ever has to, to make, to go and kill people overseas uh, with bombs, whether they be civilians or because we're never going to know which, which we managed to kill. Um, and history tells us, right back to Suez, that people take a stand of principle on this. And people have resigned down the years when they've opposed what is being done in the name of the party they support. But you seem to be prepared to sort of straddle the fence. No, I wouldn't put it like that at all. Look, I've been very straight and honest about my views. I've been clear that having weighed this up, I've come to the conclusion that we should be playing our full part in taking the fight to ISIL Daesh in Syria, as we are doing in Iraq. And remember, John, what, just over 14 months ago, the House of Commons voted by an overwhelming margin for the RAF to engage in airstrikes in Iraq. And ISIL Daesh's forward march has been halted. They have been beaten back in some areas. Recently, the Kurdish forces, the Peshmerga, took Sinjar. And without air support, that might not have happened. But of course, it's an awesome decision that we face. And members of parliament need to consult their constituents, their party, the public, their consciences. But for me, this is a decision about keeping the British people safe. But it's also about saying this. Are we going to allow an organisation which has seized territory, that beheads aid workers, that crucifies people, that throws gay men off buildings, that enslaves women and sells them into mm. uh, sexual slavery, are we going to stand aside in Iraq and Syria and say, well, you get on with it, or are we going to respond to the United Nations, which has passed unanimously a Security Council resolution, John, and I believe passionately in the United Nations. We helped as a party to found right. it at the end of the Second World War, and it has called on all the nations of the world who have the ability to do so, to use all necessary measures against right. ISIL Daesh and the threat they represent. And well, I think we know, should respect that. But well, even the Foreign Affairs Committee itself says there are unanswered questions that the Prime Minister has failed to address. One of the questions people are going to ask is, you mentioned the Kurds just then. Who's killing the Kurds? The Turks. Who are our allies? The Turks. Are we really happy to be in alliance uh, with the Turks as they kill the very people who are making the greatest impact, far greater impact than the Americans, on ISIS on the ground? Well, as your question rightly points out, John, this is a very complex and bloody civil war that has killed over 200,000 people, that has led half the population of Syria to flee their homes. Four million have fled the country. What we are all agreed on is that ISIL Daesh represents a particular threat. Yeah, that's and, an and easy the... thing to say. That's a very easy thing to say. But it's far harder to defend the fact that some of our allies are killing the very people that are killing ISIS. But let me put it to you this way, too. It is speculated very strongly that if the Raqqa capital of ISIS is ever to be captured, it'll probably be taken by the ground troops of who? President Assad, because he has the most coherent force knocking around in Syria. Happy to back that too, are you? I want to see, John, an end to the Syrian civil war. The only way that is going to happen, as you well know, is for there to be a negotiated mm. settlement. The Vienna um, meetings have taken place twice now. There is the beginnings mm. of the outline of a peace process. I am really anxious that we get a ceasefire because the vast majority of people who have died in Syria have died at the hands of President Assad, who decided to respond to his people asking for more freedom and an end to people mm. being locked up and disappearing in prisons forever, never to be seen again. Right. I but want that to be brought to an end. Only diplomacy will do that. The question we face tomorrow in the House of Commons is this. If you agree, if you recognise the threat from ISIL Daesh to the people living under its yoke, you've reported over the summer, John, the killing of the British tourists in Sousse in Tunisia, the downing of that Russian airliner, mm. the suicide bombs in Beirut yes, all, and all Ankara, that, yes. and the killings in Paris. Well, you say all that. 
that is why there is a threat, John. Indeed, 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 indeed. But the rule of law and the whole defence of the way in which we perform is rooted in our democracy. And our democracy at the moment over this issue, certainly as far as the Labour Party is concerned, is a complete shambles, as I suggested to the Labour Party leader. Do you still genuinely have total confidence in him? And in the end, is all this about nursing your own leadership ambitions? It certainly is not that, and I do have total confidence in Jeremy. And I fundamentally disagree, John, with what you've just said about the Labour Party. Because Jeremy decided, and I really welcome it, that we would have a free vote. Why did he do that? That takes strength and courage as a leader, you know, John, because he recognises that people have sincerely held views on either sides of this argument. And do we not want a politics, John, in which parliamentarians weigh these things in a serious way, respect the fact that others have a different view, and then come to our decision, and yes, be held to account for that. Isn't that what our democracy is all about? And that is what I will think we will see in the House of Commons tomorrow. And Jeremy Corbyn, through his leadership, has made that possible by saying we will have a free vote. And I think that, that is a sign of his strength and absolutely not of any weakness. Henry Benn, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.